Financial Survival Network, helping you survive and thrive in the new economy. Go to carrylutz.com and sign up for 30 free micro trainings on financial survival. This show is brought to you by Miles Franklin. They've been selling gold and silver for 22 years. And I'm a customer because when you buy, they ship. For more information, go to milesfranklin.com or call them at 800-822-8080. 1490-WGCH, this is Kerry Lutz. You're listening to the Financial Survival Network. With me now is Trace Mayer. He's an expert in how to vanish, as well as how to diversify your assets and keep you a couple of steps away from inflation and the tax man. Trace, how are you? Uh, doing great, Kerry. We had a great lunch. Was a good lunch, and uh, obviously everything you recommend people to do, being a fellow member of the bar, is legal and ethical. But there are certainly things that people can do to protect their wealth, isn't there? Oh, there's a lot that people can do to protect their wealth. And it, when you look at nature, a lot of the most successful organisms are those that are able to camouflage themselves, that are uh, able to be very stealthy. And so I think as we move into this currency collapse that we were discussing at lunch, uh, governments, they, they will be funded. And it's just a matter of who's going to be doing it and whether you're the water buffalo that gets eaten by the crocodile or if you're somehow able to adapt, grow wings, and just fly over the river. So right now they're talking about seizing people's 401ks, IRAs, private retirement plans, or taxing it in any event. So if they get people scared enough, people are going to cash in their IRAs anyway, and they'll wind up paying the taxes on them. So they've accomplished the confiscation effectively without confiscating, right? Uh, yeah, that's one thing uh, that people do. Like. You know, there's never a free lunch, and people think that, oh, with these tax breaks or matching contributions, things like that, that they're going to uh, somehow be, be able to get, you know, a, a good deal with these IRAs and 401ks. But a couple of years ago, I wrote an article about how retirement funds could boost treasuries, how, you know, you, you have these layers of assets between you, th these layers between you and your assets, and so... Uh, the custodian can be forced or coerced, you know, he has to buy treasuries because they're safe and secure with 20% of your portfolio and then that gets hyperinflated or gets inflated away. So I think that, and it's very easy to seize these things, you know, because you've got a custodian between you and your asset. And I think it's increasingly important that people reduce the layers that are between them and their assets, that you have more direct control over your assets. So me personally, I have a, you know, a, a an immaterial amount in a Roth IRA only because with self-directed Roths you can do some creative things uh, but the other types of retirement plans I, I just I think they're a trap and just like Argentina and a lot of the other countries you know they're eyeing those and they're going to they're going to take it because there's a lot of wealth and, and money there and it, it'd be easier to confiscate a 401k than it would be to confiscate gold or silver that's for sure and in a way, what you're saying, uh, so goes Argentina, so goes the world. Argentina confiscated the private pension plans several years ago, which led to some major litigation. They just nationalized an oil company that was half owned by the Respo oil company in Spain. So this is a trend that people really need to be aware of, don't they? I think it's extremely important for people to be aware of this. Uh, Argentina is a great example. I've got some friends down there, some uh, actually some very wealthy Argentinians. Uh, they fly around in their Learjet. And one thing you'll learn about Argentines is that they've got three national pastimes. They've got football, soccer, uh, is what we call it here, steak, and uh, tax avoidance. <laughs> <laughs> tax schemes, as the tax English schemes, would call them. I guess. Tax schemes. Uh, and so... They, they, they have this culture of adaptability, and when you go down there, the wealth that you see is real uh, down there. There's not a lot backed by debt, uh, it's, and it's very difficult to see a lot of the wealth. 
And that's, you know, there's a lot I think we can learn from the Argentines and how they approach things. Of course, we need to approach them all legally and, uh, you know, not be engaged in any types of tax fraud or tax evasion. But legal tax avoidance is definitely uh, something that, that everybody should be thinking of doing. And finding a way to do it where uh, it's a lot more opaque. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, as Judge Learned Hand once said, it's every American's duty, patriotic duty, to minimize or diminish the tax bite. As an American, it's your duty. You need to be thinking about this, and you need to be thinking about uh, if things get really bad in this country, other places that you might want to think about emigrating to, right? Yeah, exactly. There are a lot of countries out there that offer citizenships by investment, uh, like St. Kitts or Dominica. Then you've got countries like Canada that'll give you permanent residency. Uh, Bulgaria's got a, a great program for uh, getting permanent residency, and if they get admitted to the Shenzhen area, then you'll have uh, basically unlimited right to live throughout all of Europe and yet not really have any tax liability, uh, even to Bulgaria. And so, you know, there are a lot of, I think people need to really take into account that the world's changing, that things aren't quite as solid and stable as they used to be, and the United States isn't necessarily the place where you want to keep all of your human and economic capital because we've got a lot of uh, uncertainty here now. The, the legal system has become a tool for confiscation from producers in order to give to consumers and other organizations that have to be bailed out because they're failures in the market. And in order to get bailed out, you have to steal something from someone who is productive. And that's just not a way to run an economy in a way that's going to generate wealth. And so if you don't want to have your wealth consumed and destroyed by a bunch of these bailed out institutions that are failures, then you're going to have to look at other places to allocate your capital. Well, well said, Trace. And we talk about the collapse, and I think a lot of us, especially in the alternative money field, in the Austrian economic space, know that this collapse is coming, but we don't know when. And people always want to know, when is it going to happen? But it's obvious now that we're getting to a point where the debt is unsustainable, public debt, private debt, debt at every level of society. So at what point does this create a cascading waterfall that just takes the whole thing down? Yeah, I mean, we were discussing this at lunch, and I... You know, I could I could see I could see us waking up tomorrow and there's a gap up in gold, like Jim Sinclair said, from 1650 to 3000. But at the same time, I could also see this dragging on for another 10 or 15 years. And so, in my book, The Great Credit Contraction, uh, I I have this liquidity pyramid, and gold is at the very bottom with silver, and right above it are U.S. Uh, bonds, basically, treasuries. And that's because the, of the liquidity and the safety. And at the end of the day, the U.S. is a sole superpower. They're geopolitically unmatched. Uh, they'll probably remain so for the foreseeable future. But yeah, there are challengers coming on the scene now, such as China and India and Iran and Venezuela, etc., uh, so the U.S. is going to need to cede some of that control. And I think ultimately we're not going to see a currency collapse as long as the U.S. is remaining the sole superpower. But also, as we were talking about, in order to fund the machine, you have to, you have, to have that productive base. You have to be able to produce in order to fund this sole superpower and military strength. And that's the, the great threat, I think, that America, the, uh, the United States, uh, because America's dead, at least here, it's just moved, uh, the spirit of America. But the United States, which has just become another of these governments or states that covers the world like some type of skin disease, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's not going to give up this power or this range of empire very easily or very lightly, but they all collapse for an economic reason. And, you know, the market still has a lot of faith and a lot of trust in that sole superpower. And I don't see that necessarily going away anytime soon because it, 
I mean, you look at trade routes and you look at all the, the infrastructure that we've got, there's a lot of capital uh, that the U.S. has. As Buffett says, you know, we've got a, an immense farm. We can't even really see the edges of it. But yeah, right now with our trade and budget deficits, we're increasing the size of the mortgage and we're selling off parts of the farm. And, you know, that's a negative thing. It is unsustainable, but who knows how long this could play out. It could be another 10 or 15, 20 years, in my opinion. And that's why when you're allocating your capital, you do, you need to keep this general trend in place uh, with treasuries and gold and kind of the fluctuation and the oscillation between the two. Uh, but, you know, anybody who's kind of making an all-out bet that there's going to be a collapse in the next week or two, they're probably not going to be correct. Otherwise, the market would have priced it in. <laughs> yeah, well, that the final chapter has yet to be written, but uh, the words of the final chapter are certainly beyond the word... The words in that final chapter have yet to be written, but what they say, their message is proven throughout history. Empires die because of corruption, because of moral corruption, because of debasement of the currency, and kleptocracy, which is what we have now setting in. So my guess is we've we've seen the glory days and nothing good from here on in. It's just a question of how long it's going to be. And that's anybody's guess. But the trends of escalating gold prices, escalating silver prices, they're here to stay. And manipulation can take place, but those trends are really firmly entrenched, aren't they? Oh, yeah. It's, it's definitely a tailwind for the monetary metals because... You know, the common stock of the U.S. empire, it has nowhere to go but down because of where it's at. It's at the pinnacle, you know, or it was uh, 40, 50 years ago and uh, as it came out of World War II. And so, yeah, it's, it's a complete tailwind for the, the, the metals and it's a complete headwind for the empire. And, you know, the empire, they'll, they'll probably want to pass some law that says remove the headwind, but it <laughs> will be ineffective. It won't. You know, they can no more stop this than they could stop the tides coming in or anything like that by passing a law. And because you can't repeal economic law and the arrogance of these politicians, it's just astounding. You know, like what they've done with the SWIFT system and what they're doing with uh, these sanctions on Iran and oil and things like that. It, I, all of this is the, the market's going to route around it. I mean, do yep. they not see that that's what's going to happen? And and as the market routes around it, it's going to weaken their own position. So it's it's almost like they're intentionally doing this. Yeah, it almost feels like it. And then you get into the whole New World Order thing where I don't really want to go. So, Trace, to find out more about your work, Run to Gold, and uh, how to disappear, where do people <laughs> find you? Uh, yeah, so that's runtogold.com. And for those that are concerned about their privacy, uh, howtovanish.com. We talk all about personal and financial privacy and give you helpful tips on how to protect your identity, things like that, it's, it, which I think is especially important as we move into this information age. Oh, for sure. Privacy is dead. And unless you use extraordinary means, you pretty much are an open book. Your life, just watch that to a TV show person of interest and you'll find out all about the various ways that you're spied upon. All right, Trace, we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for being on the show. Great. Thanks, Gary.